I should have done that a while ago. Yes, it was crap. But anyway, um, shout out if you do it. Can't believe I'm excited, man. I love it when you come in in the morning because you open everything up. They're like, oh, more doors to come through. But more importantly, it's stronger when doing MDF doors. Your cock up, my ass. Well, good morning. It's Tuesday. Uh, yeah, so it was my birthday weekend um, this weekend. So I went up to Sheffield and uh, just had like a weekend away with my wife. Yeah, so I think I'm going to make all the doors today. If I can get that done, I should be able to because it's all machined. Um, oh no, it's not, is it? No, because, so what we'll do is we'll get these out on the bench, which I won't film. I'll get all them out on the bench and I'll make sure they're sitting flat. And anything, any twisting that's happened over this last week, I'll resort out through here and then I'll apply the same process on all of it. Can't believe I'm saying this, but yeah, on all of it to get it all down to the, the thickness it needs to be. Like I said last week, we're aiming for about 23 mil. At the moment, they're twenty five point five. So, um, also, I had quite a few comments. Well, messages. I had a couple of comments, but I had quite a few just direct messages over the weekend about all of this. Some really good ideas. But one of the best ideas there was a guy that commented, and he said about building a stage, but really low level, and then making it transportable. So, because the problem is here, I, I'm I am gonna bite the bullet and line all of that wall because it looks awful anyway. Now line it with ply, even if it's only nine mil ply, insulate it, leave a cut out of brick for like almost like a chimney place for the log burner. I think eventually that'll look quite nice actually, almost maybe build a chimney place. But basically, along here, put a stage in here. So I thought it's a good idea, what I might do is just hinge it so it hinges back up. So it's out of the way, because sometimes I want to bring the van in here and uh, do bits and bobs, so um, yeah. That's a good idea. So I'm not going to do that this week or anytime soon, really, because I've got I've got too much work to get on with. Um, and uh, yeah, more subscribers again. It's great. It's amazing. Um, I, which makes me think I do need to really a stop shaking this around and b get a. Um, I need to get a camera really because I've worked out this is actually killing the battery on my phone. It was doing great for the first month or two months. I was like, wow, we need a camera phone. I can do it all off my phone. Um, but it's just not lasting now. And it's getting a bit frustrating, actually. And then what, I'm, and what I need to do as well is plan the videos, I think. I think if I'm going to take it seriously, better camera and plan the videos. So I've got an itinerary of what I'm going to do a day. Um, and it'll probably actually help me do a bit more work. Mm. Right, cool. Um, pick you up in a little bit. Okay, so let's just take this door for an example here. This is one of the larder doors. Now, I cut all my rails the size they need to be. Um, you can get, or well, have got, sorry, a proper rail and style joint um, piece for the spindle mold. I've actually got one part of it in now, but I just don't do them that way because what I'll do is I'll domino these now or I'll do a loose tenon system. So if you look in uh, this video, you will see the loose tenon system. Uh, as long as you do out the same material, in particular, if you're doing them MDF doors, it's by far the actually, it's 100% it's, it's, it's the strongest way to do them. You know, no, no, no question in that at all. On this, I can understand people being concerned that you've got a large expanse of end grain going onto end grain going on to through grain, sorry, but the reality is with your panel in there and I'm gonna try and get two dominoes in these, it just makes for better decoration. They're only smaller doors. If I'm doing long doors, I will do either rail and style joints or I will do um, long loose tenons. But these are only little doors, so that'll be more than strong enough with, you know, with decent, with good quality PVA and, and the, six mil dominoes, six by 40 mil dominoes. So glue contact, 
I mean, it's, not, it's a non-issue. You're going to have just as much glue contact with the domino going through. You're actually going to have 20 mil tenons coming in there. So as long as you've got two 20 mil tenons in there, there's no chance of that going anywhere. And you will actually, in my opinion, have a much stronger door. Because when you do these rail and style joints, without, you know, you only really, I think they're about 12 mil they take out. So you've got a decent amount of contact, but it doesn't take much for that to move. You'll see some old doors, they drop and they move. And what I'm gonna do on these, because I've agreed with the customer just in terms of a design, I've actually got a, an old door down here. It's not gonna be this style, but it's just gonna have this slight Aris joint, probably a bit finer than that, just in between the rather styles. Um, just so we don't get like a stress mark and a crack mark over time with it being real wood. That's just something I like to put in. Uh, if the customer doesn't mind it, uh, I sort of sell it to the customer in, in a way that I just go, look, we'll, we'll go look at a couple of doors. Got one in here, bloody hell, is it by magic? Clean that, this is an old door. If you just do it flush like this, with no detail, it will crack over time and you'll get that bit of movement. You know, every single one will crack and split over time. There's nothing you can do about that. It's just movement. Um, so I'd just, for a cabinet, I'd rather not have it. Yeah. Yeah, don't look like doors, do they? Yeah, it's a full disclosure. I cocked up, basically. But, you know, that's what the channel's about, isn't it? You know, cock ups as well. So basically, if you spotted in the footage, I, um, I, uh, I, you, you'll see me get the flush cut saw out and bang these dominoes in here and cut them off flush. Because basically, like I said this morning, I put my styles that way and my rails that way so that I don't pick the wrong piece up and do the wrong thing because the styles, I don't send the rebate all the way to the end and the rails, I do. Um, and then the dominoes obviously go in the sides of the styles and the ends of the rails. Just for, a, just for a brief second, I just stacked eight of them the wrong way. Well, I've got eight of these as well and they're similar sizes and I just picked them up, made a cock up um, I didn't have enough timber to fully replace them. So what I've done is I've replaced it. I've replaced it. I've replaced six out of the eight with new and just recut them, which are these. Um, and I've had to scrap the others. Um, and then the other two, I just took ones that I cocked up on and just smacked in some uh, dominoes, flush cut them off, sand them back. They'll decorate out. Um, yeah, it's, a, it's one of these little, it's like handmade product, isn't it? So you get these little things. And you won't, you'll never see it, it 100%. That'll be completely gone when it's done dusted. And it'll be, I'll make sure again, I'll put it on the top side of the door. Just little things so you just, you know, it's one of them really. It's either that or I've got to stop everything and machine some more timber, um, which is a bit of a process. And, I, and it's stable, I've, I've done my bit on it. Yeah, so um, what I am going to do then, so I've cut the panels as well. I've got to go now, but it does mean in the morning I can come in perhaps a little bit early and I can just glue those doors up, throw them to one side, then machine all the rest, 
And while that's going off, I can then utilise my clamps off the first set. Because that's really why I wanted to complete X amount of doors. Um, it sort of bit me in the arse, really, because I've made a mistake. But it's life, isn't it? You know, you make mistakes. Just, it's about getting over them, isn't it? And I've made that mistake before, which is why I stack them that way. Um, so I've perhaps just got to put a bit more attention in. Or my mind's probably elsewhere anyway. But uh, I'll be in the morning, crack on, getting the doors made. Um, so they'll all be assembled tomorrow and I'll probably jump on prepping these. I probably won't be able to assemble those shelves tomorrow because I won't have enough clamps and I won't have enough time either. Right, um, see you tomorrow. Hi, right, good morning. It's Wednesday morning. Um, I've, uh, so yeah, I've been here for a couple of hours. I've assembled those. I only left my phone charger at home, so I'm not going to do hardly any filming today, which is probably some relief to the length of the videos, to be honest with you. Do the same process, which I filmed yesterday. Um, of doing all the, the, you know, the joints and stuff on those and the router and the sand and whatnot, anything I've got to do on them, I can't actually remember. Yeah, so now that's that process, I'll get that done on them. In the hour or so that will take, these will be going off in their clamps and then I can just start, I've got some clamps left anyway, and I've actually got a couple more in the van. So as long as I can get, as long as they're in there for at least, um, at least a couple of hours, I don't move them around too much. That should be fine. In an ideal world, I like to leave them clamped up for 24 hours, but it does sound 30 minutes, I think, on this. But 24 hours is, is what we're always aiming for. Um, so what I'll probably do is I'll probably just put a bit of footage of me assembling those, and then that might be it for today, unfortunately. Um, but I will obviously get other stuff done. I just won't be able to film it. Um, Hey-ho, that's the problem you get. That's the, that's the, that's the mistakes you make. You know, that's the that's the issue, isn't it, really? We're doing this on my phone. I've just started to notice now, this last week, like I said yesterday, it's just dying, the phone time. squeeze out for you oh, i've been very very busy um yeah so basically as i said um i think it's spinning around didn't have a lot of battery so what i've done is you've seen some of this i've put these doors together uh it's two goes for that because i haven't quite got enough clamps to all of them uh, it doesn't look like a lot but there is a fair few there um so in the sort of interim in the, in the meantime of doing that i reduced this oak again like i said the other day I like to get it somewhere near, then I'll leave it for a little bit, just in case we get any sort of changes or wobbles in the in the material over that next week. Uh, I've just given it its semi-final reduction and rejoined the edges, re-straightened them. They'd all stayed straight and true, to be fair. Um, and then just edge-jointed them over there on the machine, dominoed them, and I've actually managed to get some of them glued and clamped up for overnight. I'll get the others done tomorrow, so busy day really, to be honest with you. Um, it's amazing what you can get done when you're not picking up your phone, chatting for 20 minutes. Um, and then tomorrow, I've actually got another little job to do, uh, which is in the workshop. Um, it's uh, just some Alco furniture, and the lady wants it making out of MDF. But it's round style MDF doors, so I thought it might be interesting to do it in the same week that I've done these. Because, um, yeah, you know, see like a comparison, what's quickest and in a slightly different method. Obviously, I've done a slightly different method of doing those to uh, this video up here. Uh, yeah, and the reason I've done that as well is purely because in um, in that video, when I did them tulip with doors, they're longer doors uh, and 
they're a bit harder to get right. So I re-square them on the panel saw. These, they're such small doors, I can get those bob on square and I'm clamping them together. So I apply a slightly different technique. Plus they're all smaller doors, you're all gonna see down on them. I don't really want that decoration hassle of the, of the loose tongue. So these have just been um, double dominoed. <laughs> <clears throat> morning. Thursday morning. So, um, yeah, what have we done? Well, I dated you last night. I think my battery, it died just as I left, so I'm sure it all recorded. Uh, but basically, um, I'm going to make these MDF doors. They say you've got to have a purpose when you do these videos. So I think the purpose today, well, not today, I'll do other stuff as well. Um, because that's the other thing you see when I'm doing this stuff, there's other stuff I'm doing, I'm not filming everything I do, yeah. So, I'm just trying to include um, something with a little bit of detail, really. Or it's, try, it's hard not to include repeat stuff, um, because my job's repetitive sometimes, although the shapes and sizes are different. So, basically, I've got um, I've got a set of MDF, uh, I've got a this Alco furniture. Now, it's not really my normal sort of work. Basically, um, she came to me for a price. Um, she's, getting, she's got some plastering happening, the painting and decorator going in, um, and all of which means that she just doesn't want a finished unit, which is not really what I like doing. And again, alarm bells. So the carpenter in already, who's done some of the floating shelves on the other side of the room, um, and for whatever reason, she doesn't want him back. Uh, and I actually went and visited. So I gave her a sort of like a price over the phone um, and, a, and a loose drawing uh, just to just really just see if she was interested. It wasn't the best drawing. In fact, it's the drawing I just put up on the screen. It's just like a, you know, this is what you can have for roughly this much money. Uh, but she doesn't want it painting. She's going to, I said, look, I can't, I, I don't do like a raw, I can't give you a product that's not painted. But I can give you it primed. That's the best I can do, really. Um, or the worst I can do, sorry. Just because if you give someone like raw MDF and you expect them to paint it, they'll make it look crap. You know, I don't know. Some, I mean, they, they might be good at painting it, but it's a lot of work, a lot of effort around all the handles and the hinges and inside the cupboard. Also, I don't do my insides painted because they just... You've, you've got to, again, you've got to go through such a process, like spraying, hardeners and all stuff, that the reality is... I just do a veneer product and oil it or a melamine product. Um, I certainly don't want them to paint the inside of their covers. I hate doing that sort of stuff. Um, yeah, so, so like these here, they're, they'll be sprayed and they'll be, you know, and even then they'll be sprayed with, and there'll be a hardener in them with a the spray um, and they'll, they'll be done properly. Now, even the shelves I've done in a solid oak, just for contrast as much as anything, but I know that they'll wear and tear with jars going in and out. Anyway, I digress. The, uh, so this um, furniture, what I'm gonna do uh, is I'm gonna time that today, how long it takes me, probably not to make the cupboard, because, yeah, hello. Hello, you in? Um, yeah, probably not to make the cupboard, just to make the actual doors. Just thought it'd be interesting because I've processed a couple of times now how long these ones take. Um, you know, you've got to include the fitness in the machine. You know, I've got to go pick the timber up, I've got to get it back here, I've got to resize it. Um, with the MDF, you can actually just have a definite plan from the second you start. Uh, and like I said before, some people will just do the, um, you know, they'll just get a bit of MDF at 12 mil and they'll glue some 12 mil rails and styles on. And that's it, job done, but yeah. Oh. I mean, it does, don't get me wrong, it works, because I've done it before for fake panels, and it will last. But I don't really like it. It's not a strong a door connection. Um, and actually, the way I do it, like the proper way of round style joints, I don't think it's any slower than doing it that the other, that way. Um, and you get a lot lighter door as well. And you get the profile on the back of the door, yeah? Rather than just having a slab on the back of them doors. Well, I actually don't know how they get away with it, to be honest with you. I think it looks crap. But anyway... Um, shout out if you do it. Uh, yeah, so what I'll do is I am going to uh, utilise the fact that I've only got X amount of clamps. It probably is going to be what my next purchase, basically, is going to be either a drum sander or a load more clamps. Probably a drum sander. 
because it's more expensive and I'll just get that out of the way. But basically, um, so I've got all these oak boards here. I'm just going to quickly now just unclamp these and do these ones, but I'll probably have a couple left after that. And then while they're going off and the clamps, good couple of hours, I'll start processing all these um, these MDF components for that furniture and I'll take you through that, I guess. Uh, the old swallow. Oh, there you go. I love it when you come in in the morning because you open everything up. They're like, oh, more doors to come through. And they come in, they're like, oh yeah, I've been there. And they just play for a bit. <laughs> So not too long at all for that. Uh, here they are down by the door. You'll, you'll notice that it's a, a loose tongue banged all the way in. So I've been doing these for years and years now. And I used to always do round style joints, but um, I've gone through this a little bit before. When you do a round style joint, it sort of changes the maths of what you have to do when you're cutting them. That middle rail, you have to then work out how big the um the rebate is for the joint and you have to add that on yeah it's not it's not a big deal but it's just a lot easier maths wise doing it this way but more importantly it's stronger when doing mdf doors right, so what i'm going to do now is probably not going to film much for the rest of the day because all i'm going to do is start i've got to clamp them boards together because i've got my clamps free now um and i'm going to start doing my cupboards for the kitchen and I'm going to do the cover for that unit as well that I've just done the doors for. So I'm not actually going to do any assembly. I'm just going to go through my cut list and just cut every single panel and chop basically gold by the end of the day. Um, I'll show you uh, 
I've showed you my cut list, haven't I? So I might put that on the screen, how I do it. And then also, um, because I've got that domino list, the spreadsheet, I can then take my face frames, which are done, they're done on the computer. I can take those, put them back onto my computer program and I can draw the cupboards around them with the margins for whichever domino I'm using, whichever offset I'm using for whatever hinge. So I can actually get all my cupboard sizes, which I've actually already done. So I'm gonna put that on the screen. I'm basically gonna go through that list now. And I'm gonna cut every single panel. I've got nine veneer boards down there. So I'm gonna cut all my veneer boards and I'm gonna stack them on the bench. I'll probably do like tops and bottoms and sides on one side. And then tomorrow it'll just be domino in pocket hole and getting them all. I should have them all made really, I'd have thought. It's just the, the maths is really the hard bit. Uh, I've also got to rebate these as well, some 25mm MDF. I've got to rebate that so that it becomes a floating shelf, which you'll see for next week. I think Thursday I'm going to fit this furniture next week, not the kitchen, that's a while off now. But yeah, the person that's already done it is basically taking a 25mm piece of MDF. And sort of like, it's quite clever in a way, like routed it out and then put some battens on the wall and cupped it over the, the battens, but I don't think it's very strong. So anyway, I've got a route of that out, but I'm just thinking I might as well just run it on the spindle mold. I've got a nine mil rebate cutter, which is what the batten is, I think is used, or was it 11? Anyway, so I'll do that. I ain't gonna film that, it's just rebating something really. Um, yeah, so yeah, basically tomorrow morning, it will be all my boards on there and it'll just be assembly day for the cupboards. Morning, Friday, they probably won't do it. They probably won't do it, but let's just see if they do. It's great if they do. Hang on. Turn the lights on. Come over here. Come in, look, look, they come in. As soon as you open the door, they come in. Every morning. Oh, I missed it. I was putting my stuff down. And then, sometimes they just, just out here, they're just hanging around. Yesterday, they were just hovering here, ready to come through the doorway, but I was standing here. I didn't have my phone on me. Gone up there. Let's have a little look. There's a couple of them waiting up there, look. Have a little look around. They're washing the gutter. Here, here comes one, here comes one. Yeah, um, right. <clears throat> what am I doing? Uh, I live and work, um, live and work, I live and work, I work to live, I live to work. I live about 20 minutes away from the workshop, which is no big deal, I actually prefer it. I've been closer, I've been further from each workshop. Um, this is a pain if you forget something, but equally I'll probably forget less. Whereas when I was closer, I was forgetting stuff all the time because I knew I could be home in 10 minutes. But yeah, 20, 25 minutes. However, that's a great time in the morning just to think. Uh, so I put my music on, drive to work and think about anything. Sometimes it's work, sometimes it's not. Um, but quite often work will come to the, you know, come to the front of my mind, normally towards the end of a journey. And it hit me. It seems a bit harder to do while I'm in here. But, you know, I was talking about having, plying all of that, building a stage that folds up. Well, that's great with the exception of, if I've, see, that's about just over three metres, I think. Yeah, just over three metres at the moment. I can only really ever fit five metres in there and some of it will be in front of the stairs. So I still want to do that flap, but I'm thinking I've got these benches, these, and what I could do, I might have made some more because they might not be wide enough, but basically I could put those on kitchen legs, on adjustable plinth legs, have two or three of those, clip them up on the wall somewhere, and then I could drop them on the floor and I could put my units on those as and when, when I'm building rooms, from building a kitchen, like an L-shaped kitchen, which is what I'm doing today, I can do that. And it saves me putting the legs on the units, which I always have to do because I want to build the units up high enough to click my face frames on. So I have to overextend the legs because obviously you scribe the face frames into the floor when they're on site. But then it means transporting them is a bit of a pain because the legs are on. So yesterday, before I left, I cut these. I've got a couple more to cut. Just Run out of time, unfortunately. I'm gonna stack all them doors underneath there and the shelves underneath there. Have a bit of a bit of a sort out. Set up a little area. I won't be able to put the kitchen legs on today because I haven't got any. I don't think I've got any kitchen feet. But I might have. I'll check in one of my boxes. But yeah, so basically, I'm gonna set up a little area, um, and then I'll just film me putting the cupboards together. Whack the cupboards on there. Then it means I can do me domino and do me drawer and do me face fronts. Anyway, let's jump on that then. 
Let's get, give that a go. Tidy up time. Do I film it? Do I bollocks? Cue the video. <laughs>32 holes only in one cupboard and I've, that's why I haven't built the wall units because I remembered and I thought well I'll just have to do that Monday and um, they're all done now looks good you can see what I'm saying now about the assembly area the only thing I haven't done is I've not put um, legs on because I haven't really got enough kitchen legs and they're, they, I won't use those they're actually too short they're only I think they're two meters long these these panels under here so I think I'm going to make a load like that without the holes. I don't need the holes, you see. Uh, um, 2.4, probably three or four. And then that'll do some of that wall. I can just, then I can just have assembly areas in here. Um, yeah, I think that looks all right though. And the advantage now, you see, what I've tried to do there is I tried to film that last little bit, just showing off again that sort of um, festival system with the uh, dominoes presetting for the face frames and the offsets to the hinges. Now what that does is that gives me my openings and my cabinet dimensions because don't forget they're fixed sort of laterally now. You can adjust them for height because I haven't put the height dominoes in yet, but they're sort of fixed left and right if you like. So that, so laterally they're correct to, to each cupboard. So now I can, I've got to order a bin for there and I can make a drawer. I've got to make three drawers for there, 
three drawers for there. That, that, there's going to be a metre gap in between that because there's actually an oven there. Uh, and I'm going to turn that into a drawer, like a pull-out drawer under the Belfast. I just think it will be more usable than, um, than anything else. That's just a cupboard. But again, although I know, because I've done my presets on my domino thing, I, I just can order the right hinge for that. That's that other alcove unit. Um, again, just a dry run. Uh, I've just got a couple of things to do. I've got to put a middle brace in. I'll put a middle brace in that cupboard as well. But I actually do those in solid oak just because, you know, by the, by the time you put a piece of um, veneer board in and lip it in that, you might as well run off solid oak. Um, and I shall get that from the offcuts of these shelves because some of those shelves are probably about 50, 60 mil too big. So that'd be perfect. Yeah, thanks again for all the uh, new subscribers. Uh, it's been another fantastic week for that, really. I think I've, I'm getting sort of like 10 to 15 a week, um, which is brilliant. Uh, I've worked out the analytics. I know that a lot of people watch it aren't subscribed, but then equally a lot of those people, they're not where you are now. They're not at the end of the video. They're only watching 20 minutes. Um, and I get it. It's a long video. I know it is, but uh, come on. What am I supposed to do? You try it. <laughs> um, yeah, so this should be a good little project, actually, because the reality of this is the people I'm making this for, they've told me they're going to move out for two weeks while I fit it, which should mean I'll be able to film installing this, which would be, a, you know, great, because I didn't film installing the last one. Um, that's something, really, that I have got to work on because it's all right, you know, picking the camera up in the workshop. Um, but doing it in someone's house, it's not always ideal. Quite often there's people about. Um, because they live there. Isn't that interesting, is it? I'm boring myself now. Right. Like I say, thanks again. See you next week.